welcome to Mindscapes, our series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today is a distinguished, eminent, erudite Bharatnatyam dancer. I'm delighted to welcome Leela Sampson. Thank you. Uh, Leela, you're a, a scholar who has written extensively about dance. Um, you are at the, at the pinnacle of your um, profession. Um, uh, why and, 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 and what role do you feel dance has in the community? What is its value, meaning, relevance? Um, why dance? It's a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think basically it's, uh, it's just something that's fundamental to uh, the human being, uh, a need to express oneself. It comes from a child. You see it in um, humble, simple people. Uh, the need to show joy, if you like, or a sense of uh, elan through the body. Uh, it is also the most beautiful, uh, to me, I think, the most beautiful vehicle of expression, because um, especially now that we abuse the body so much, it seems more and more in society the need for, um, for one to look at it as, a, as, a, as something that uh, is so striking in its uh, simplicity, in its um, beauty, and in that every one is different, and that uh, when they express themselves either through the hands or through the entire body or through the face, through the eyes especially, that each one uses it so differently and yet so beautifully. And this is uh, really what dance, uh, the premise on which dance begins mm -hmm. to um, to move forward. You have mentioned this aspect of uh, how we all sort of tend to spontaneously uh, express ourselves. You know, as I talk to you, I use my hand in a particular yes. way and we tend to express ourselves. Um, yet, sort of the Indian dance traditions are extremely, um, uh, how do I say, stylized. rigidly stylized. Yes. It's prescribed, sort of different movements yeah. for, for different expressions. How do the two sort of dovetail? This is like any other uh, subject that has uh, received the impulses of a mind and a, a thinking for, you know, over decades, over generations. Uh, it gets more and more finite and therefore more and more in some way, yes, if you like, um, fits into uh, tighter parameters. But in fact, uh, like everything about life, the more, if you like, I don't like the word very much, but if you like disciplined one is, the more freedom one really has. It's, it's, the difficult thing is to find the, the absolute freedom, the absolute uh, joy of roaming uh, in a given, uh, you know, with a boundary. And that's what class, the classical arts, are, the reason why they're so difficult is that you do have to conform to not just uh, a whole uh, string of, you know, do's and don'ts, but that to make it relevant to yourself and to the society in which you live in every given generation, in every given time, you're also mm, changing it, you're also mm -hmm. expanding it, you're also mm -hmm. moving it forward in a sense or stagnating. But do you find that sort of the prescription of every mudra, of every rasa, of sort of, uh, and, and, and the codification of this, uh, to, to, to what degree uh, does is it, necessary? is it necessary? Well, it's a, uh, it's a kinky, if you like, but it's also very, uh, it's a very interesting uh, vocabulary. Uh, I think with the very great masters, for instance, if you watched uh, somebody like uh, Pandit Bhutra Maharaj or Keluchar Mahapatra, people of our time who were really great masters, uh, Kalamandam Krishnaya, these people used very little of these of the vocabulary. They rose above it in a sense, and much of it was just uh, free expression and you know uh, very impromptu, uh, non-conformist kind of uh, dialogue. But if you look at it in, in the hands of a very young person who's just coming onto the stage, an 18-year-old, you'll find them doing uh, sahitya, using sahitya, which has many, many words. They have to say so much, you know, do so much more to say so much, such a little. Uh, and it's absolutely the opposite when you 
walk the path and when you've reached a stage where you hardly have to say anything to be able to get across to sh- you know, a large number of people. And this is the challenge that actually the vocabulary may or may not be used. It's up to you really to uh, discard uh, a dozen little things that uh, will become irrelevant only when you've you know, got used to the... To, to, to what degree are you in, inhibited or, or, or shall we say impaired that, that much of this also tends to derive from mythology, from, from the sacred? Well, uh, that's it. Uh, to me, mythology is a lot of fun. I've never had a problem with uh, uh, teaching students um, um, through these fun stories. Uh, they, they love it. They have something to hold on to. They're very real for them. Uh, the reason why Walt Disney is so uh, popular and continues to be is because of this. It's, it's really the, the caricature of uh, existence and I think that's wonderful. As far as the sacred is concerned, the philosophy is concerned, uh, that is uh, another whole realm. And uh, that is a necessary realm to everything that uh, has its roots in Indian thought, mm-hmm. in Indian uh, um, traditional, I wouldn't say religions, but in Indian uh, philosophy. Why is it necessary? Because ultimately all of us, I think, uh, uh, if we can discard the 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 reality of our times, the need to be well known or rich or whatever, if you go beyond that, then of course we're all on a on a search for a particular um, a goal, uh, a, a seeking of some uh, point of perfection in our lives, a seeking for some truth. Um, and it depends on, you know, who we are, what sanskara we have, but uh, how much we are interested in walking the path. But uh, we're, in, we're on a search. So for an individual artist or for a, a, a drama company, if you like, or for a group of people or for a nation, it's still the same. It's a, it's, it's a, a development of the self, but not just the physical self, mm-hmm. I would... Mm-hmm. I, I would like when you talk about sort of search and, 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 and seeking, yes. uh, what, what, what fulfillment has dance given your search and seeking and what is your search and seeking? Well, it's the perfect uh, foil, I think, because um, it's so physical that you can miss the point completely uh, because it's, uh, it tends to make you, make you in the beginning, especially a woman, uh, you know, and you know, uh, the large majority of Indians, the attitude towards Indian dance or an Indian dancer or a woman who's a dancer has always from time immemorial been something that is, uh, uh, that has various connotations, let's say. Um, to be in a field where the physical is so vital and to be able to actually uh, seek to discard it completely and to, uh, not just for yourself, but to make an audience see something that goes beyond the physical. I think that is, that is, that is interesting because for me it's a constant... Um, I'm somewhat uh, taken aback when somebody mentions something that, that is very physical about what I did. Uh, because it, um, it is exciting and I think uh, all art must have a, an element of excitement and joy and uh, joy de vivre and it must, it must also be cheeky and uh, daredevilry if you like. But uh, the wonderful thing about the Indian dance forms is that the Sahitya is, has always um, directed itself towards the search of the, the Jivatma for the Paramatma. Now whatever words we might use uh, People tend to listen to such words because they are either san- in Sanskrit, usually in Sanskrit, and immediately define it as being a very Hindu thing. Mm. I totally disagree. I think it's a very universal uh, thing. It's uh, any artist in any part of the world has that same ultimate desire to 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 forget the physical, to forget the uh, the presence of 
the present, if you like, and to to go into realms that are where there's quietude, where there's uh, another thing happening. You mentioned this aspect of physicality, and I was uh, uh, reading an article uh, about you where where you sort of talked about um, deglamorizing yourself and not sort of being concerned about not being glamorous. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure that's an accurate description, but we will just accept it. And, and, and do you sort of consciously feel that uh, maybe you have to sort of, in, 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 in the way you perceive yourself and the way you project yourself, that, that somehow to be true uh, to the art and to these higher realms uh, that you're talking about, that, that some ways you need to sort of consciously avoid glamorizing it because it may detract from the essential of what you're doing, you're striving? I think so, because, uh, well, uh, one is I like to, at most times, to be true to myself, and, and I'm not a very uh, mm -hmm. glamorous person, uh, but... Uh, As you perceive yourself. <laughs> no, uh, uh -huh. no, I know what uh, the dance can do to you is, is mm -hmm. that the ego can become very upfront. Mm -hmm. uh, most dancers are fairly attractive people. They uh, therefore, uh, that can be sort of almost an overriding uh, thing which you're dealing with. You have to deal with it yourself. I mean, it's not just that uh, that you um, throw that at an audience and say, take it. But it's also that having to deal with it all through your life. It's, it must be a very big burden. Uh, and uh, mostly when you, when you watch a dancer, uh, very often when I was growing up, I could see that, that the personality of the dancer was uh, imprinted mm -hmm. on the dance form mm -hmm. and you could you almost went to see the dance well it's true you do go to see the dancer mm -hmm. but um, there's also a very beautiful form there uh, and we are just the I'd like to think that we're just the carriers of that mm -hmm. we're using mm -hmm. that language mm -hmm. or we're using that uh, mm -hmm. medium to express mm -hmm. ourselves so what is the distinction between uh, dance being your personal sadhana for your own discovery and, and the relationship between mind and body and the sacred and, and dance as performance. This is the thing that it's, it's really such a, uh, it's like walking on edge at most times. There are various things happening here. One is we talked, you know, about that. I find that very interesting that you, you use the body as a form of expression. There, is, there are given standards of perfection as far as what a uh, very male dominated society thinks what a woman should look ni like and what you know uh, what is beautiful in the dancer the, the, the shastras have have in fact written them all down mm -hmm. but how she should be mm -hmm. and um, so there's you have to deal with that on the one hand uh, and yet forget that mm -hmm. then on the other hand there's this whole thing of performing for actually uh, actually uh, being on show, mm -hmm. which is a very, imp uh, it's not a personal thing at all, it's a very, mm -hmm. and yet there's, uh, I think uh, an audience would never forgive a dancer who doesn't go into herself in a sense and bring out something that is, that extra something that is not, mm -hmm. you know, totally uh, mm -hmm. apparent in, in, in just the learning process. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a very, mm, non-private thing, mm -hmm. this performance. Mm -hmm. It's something I don't like about mm -hmm. performing at all. Mm -hmm. And yet, when you're on stage, it's almost like being on an island uh, by yourself, but mm -hmm. y when the lights go off, there's almost nobody there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in a sense, it's, 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 uh, you can actually get lost. A very private person can also get lost mm -hmm. in this uh, strangely very mm -hmm. uh, public place. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things that amazes me about the form because I was I was a bit of a tomboy I must tell you when I was mm -hmm. small I, I, I hated uh, dressing up or jewelry or uh, mm -hmm. I swam and I rode mm -hmm. horses mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. I cycled and mm -hmm. I did whatever my brothers did and if anybody had said to me that you know you're going to be a dancer and you're going to be on stage and all decked up mm -hmm. I would have sworn it would never mm -hmm. happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it did something that um, it's like a garb. To me, it's like a, it's something I can hide behind. Very often, dancers, uh, senior dancers, um, for instance, Chandralekha has, has a very valid, mm -hmm. valid argument. Mm -hmm. 
then why don't you divest yourself mm -hmm. of of this paraphernalia mm -hmm. that goes with the dance and i tended to agree in days when i was more radical mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. uh, fighting everything that was the norm but now i i find that it's not so easy to mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. it would be a further bearing of all mm -hmm. if you like you know mm -hmm. while with with this uh, paraphernalia you almost are able to cover yourself up mm -hmm. uh, but that a dancer is able to speak through that mm -hmm. or speak to you in spite of that mm -hmm. honestly mm -hmm. is is the wonder of the mm -hmm. thing i mean that you know you can mm -hmm. sort of almost forget it all does one have to be a sort of uh, a, a good human being to be a good dancer because we hear so much about sadhana and, and purity of emotion and and, and communicating that uh, to what degree does that sort of moral ethical framework determine how good a dancer you are well uh, i grew up in uh, in an institute and under the influence of 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 uh, somebody who uh, kept i mean i often heard her say that i don't care if you're a good dancer or not i just want you to be a good human being and she definitely created an environment uh which tended to emphasize many other things other than the dance well we should sort of explain to the audience that you went to kalashetra and you were working with rukmini ji yes <laughs> so well you know with somebody uh -huh. like her uh, the thing that i uh, noticed or absorbed most about her was her philosophy uh, it wasn't her dance so there were many other things that uh, that spoke to me through her and th as you know kalashetra was founded on Uh, the whole theosophical background and uh, religion uh, in its narrow parameters didn't have anything to do with the the place and yet there was a very fundamental um acknowledgement of hinduism as a as a very profound philosophy but she was very strongly as you know she was influenced by buddhism and um we had prayers of all religions and she was a great admirer of the dalai lama and uh, there were so many wonderful things happening that uh, i don't think there was much room for the ego uh, there uh, in terms of uh, as a student uh, there were too many other vital things that were coming at you and the dance was one of them um so that um, i don't know about a good human being but uh, i think that's important for anything uh, but it's certainly uh, it would be very useful uh, to see an artist who's honest and honest not just to trends latest trends that are uh, you know that sell in the market or whatever but to be honest to their own um, development along the the path because if i'm not ready to do what uh, xyz is doing um then it shouldn't hassle me shouldn't worry me but if i jump onto the bandwagon of what is popular and what is then i think i i'm being in a sense dishonest to myself and to my to my own asanskara we're not the same we're all different we come with a different uh, with different uh, baggage we, we have uh, some burden of baggage and we also have uh, uh, some assets mm -hmm. and you know you have uh, in, in 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 your life and commitment as an artist at least as 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 perceived from the outside uh made an enormous uh, personal commitment to the exclusion of a great deal of of you know the aspects of uh, of getting married a, a family and 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 other sort of socially uh recommended shall we say <laughs> uh forms of, of of how is uh, has, has that been a, a conscious choice or has that no, been a, no, a natural flowing of your commitment and your involvement no, in no, dance no. <laughs> no it isn't anything as uh, beautiful and as uh, idealistic as that um i think uh, i think life just takes you 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 accept the challenges it gives you you um accept the um you know that which is not perhaps to be uh uh one has to learn to uh, to take that as well i didn't make a conscious choice not to uh marry i would have been probably very happy to put my feet up and let somebody pay the bills <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, uh no it's uh, it's 
just um, I think you're fated to as I say I, d I didn't ever intend to be a dancer I even when I finished uh, school I was and I had finished my my diploma course in Kalakshetra by then I still didn't know I wanted to be a dancer I wanted to be uh, surgeon mm -hmm. and uh, my mind was on uh, medicine and um, I wanted to use my hands yes mm -hmm. but I didn't think they would be using mm -hmm. such mm -hmm. delicate mudras um, but it was only when I went to you know post college that I realized that mm -hmm. I did have something that uh, that I might like to do and it's, it wasn't until much later when I was already recognized that uh, mm -hmm. it hit me on the head that you know I had a career in hand mm -hmm. so and as far as giving up the other things I just you know was involved in what I was doing mm -hmm. and um, I think um, unreasonably so sometimes or at, at certainly at the right time <laughs> so that uh, I must have put off a mm -hmm. uh, good number of people mm -hmm. and um, your life has, has seems to have the sort of incredible uh, quality of uh, flow and, 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 and surrender and, and, and harmonizing with that flow. Uh, you, have you had sort of ever, ever had a, a doubt uh, or about what you were doing and its value and meaning? No, no, not. Uh, I haven't liked a lot of mm -hmm. uh, about the field. Mm -hmm. I still don't. Mm -hmm. I feel uh, in some way that I'm a misfit. Mm -hmm. um, everything about it, and it's nice that we talked about things that uh, mm -hmm. that I I spend a lot of time on, and that is that there is much about it, including the glamour, the physicality of it. The um, I am certainly in my mind inclined towards uh, more peaceful pastimes. Uh, I don't. I can't even see myself sometimes as a dancer, but I like my colleagues. They're uh, in a sense they're they're mad, they're interesting, they're they're bitchy, uh, but uh, uh, but many of them have given up a lot for uh, you know to to keep this art form alive uh, for the next generation. And I think it's a, it's a lovely pastime. I like teaching. I like. The fact that I'm able to interact mm -hmm. with young people all the time mm -hmm. keeps me up to date with their mm -hmm. uh, jargon and their mm -hmm. thinking. You um, described sort of your, your colleagues as, as 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 mad, interesting, <laughs> bitchy. Um, uh, how do you relate? What are your relationships with your? Uh, with I your have colleagues? some very good friends out there. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. I find I'm. I've always been very keen to to know them, mm -hmm. but there are there are. Uh, these invisible walls that uh, mm -hmm. came up between mm -hmm. all of us mm -hmm. and I think it's because of great sense of insecurity mm -hmm. uh, each one is uh, so mm -hmm. paranoid about themselves that mm -hmm. uh, and their own careers that there is a natural or what they consider to be a natural uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. shunning of all other uh, mm -hmm. of, a, of a natural relationship because mm -hmm. we uh, who better than them to understand what you're going through? Mm -hmm. uh, all the pain, all the, um, the things you have to put up with, the musicians, the mm -hmm. organizers, travel, mm -hmm. money, uh, mm -hmm. the managing uh, husbands mm -hmm. or not, or whatever. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's something that I think we could be very good friends. And I, I have some wonderful mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm happy that uh, we have a good understanding. We get along well. We are a generation of uh, dancers who have actually been able to bring the styles mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. on stage. Mm -hmm. And that's not easy because you need mm -hmm. to really dialogue on that. Mm -hmm. And there are two bodies speaking mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. so it, there's great ego clashes. Mm -hmm. that, that could really be something. But uh, for instance with Madhvi, um, there's been a wonderful relationship mm -hmm. where we, we don't feel each other's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we don't feel that we're attacking mm -hmm. each other's areas mm -hmm. of work or anything. Mm -hmm. And um, there are others. I think almost every other young dancer of my generation, mm -hmm. uh, I know and mm -hmm. respect and mm -hmm. get along fairly mm -hmm. well with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you cope with, uh, at least from the outside, uh, sort of the, the perceived politics of patronage, uh, of particularly institutional patronage of the state, 
that you know support some artists, doesn't support other artists. Uh, you know, there isn't an, there isn't an empirical scale that can decide person X is better than person Y. Yeah. Uh, how does that sort of work? I for think you? you have to ultimately. Uh, well, one uh, one thing you can do, which most dancers uh, would like to do, and that is to. Uh, to have a little sugar daddy somewhere, mm -hmm. especially somebody in mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's one way of working it. The other way is, of course, uh, to accept mm -hmm. what comes your way and mm -hmm. not to get uh, hassled when it doesn't. Which is really what we perceive you as having done. Sadly, <laughs> 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 I think somebody's going to say out there. No, no. I don't know. I think no. you have to just. Uh, I'm happy. I don't. I don't. Uh, don't let it worry me. There was a time when you were young. I think you, when you're really um, smothered by all the parameters of it, you 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 let it worry you, and you. But there's nothing you can do about it. And I think there will always be. And it's the same all over the world. It's not just in India. What dream? What aspiration uh, have you set for yourself now, or is it just an ongoing process? I of don't surrender? do that sort of thing. I don't uh, uh, tend to give myself a goal. I, I sort of go with the flow, more or less. And uh, I think if, if, if uh, opportunities to, mm, to do various things, I mean, I, I, I like to experiment with teaching, with choreography, with my own work. And if I get those, I'll, <laughs> I'll go with it. Well, there was so much we could have talked about, about your school, about the relationship with your students, but sort of Time always comes to stop sometimes, somehow on television at least. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you.